Thank you all for tuning in to the inaugural edition of the Feeling Dangerous podcast. I am your host, Derek DDP Kirby, and joining me here today is a dude I have a ton of respect for, James Yates, a.k.a. Big Game James of Silver and Blue Nation. For those of you who may not know, Silver and Blue Nation is a Dallas Cowboys-centric sports talk brand with approximately 60,000 followers across Facebook and YouTube. Alongside his producer, Producer G, James does live streams every Sunday and during the season can be found making frequent guest appearances on channels like The Dallas Prospect and Law Nation. James is an incredibly hardworking and talented, driven individual. And when he's not physically talking Cowboys, he's writing for SilverBlueNation.com and TheDallasProspect.com. He's a beast. He's a good friend of mine. James, thank you for joining me here today. What's up, dog? I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Just just on the grind. It don't never stop. That's just the biggest thing. I appreciate all the great goodness and love that came out your mouth. Thank you very much. <laughs> not a problem at all. Not a problem. So for this inaugural edition, I wanted to start off with an interview uh, with someone that I work with a lot, obviously, that being you. Uh, I, I think that something that people don't always take into consideration you know they watch our channels they might be subscribed and watch us regularly but they don't really know kind of the backstory about how we built up the brand how we kind of came into the whole thing and Mm -hmm. i think that's in a lot of cases kind of an interesting story that gets overlooked so i wanted to kind of shine a little bit of a spotlight on silver and blue nation you guys have been going i want to say you just recently had what was it your was it two years yeah yeah yeah. two years on the second yeah our first live show we did a few uh, we we did yeah we did a few other like we did a few other shows kind of like in the basement type of thing but that was like our first for real like facebook live for real one okay very cool well congrats on that um i knew it was recent i didn't know i missed it by only a day that'd been funny if i actually done this yesterday uh the yeah that'd have been dope (laughs) <laughs> still, it's still it's still dope anyway but that's still close enough one day off that ain't hurt nobody oh yeah for sure so everyone anytime they're gonna start a channel or try and do like what we do they all have a different path to starting their brand or channel uh, mm-hmm. but you and G I think took a little bit more of a specific route than the person who just goes and creates a, a channel and jumps on there can you tell me a little bit about uh, kind of how you and G met and the, the kind of origin, if you will, of Silver and Blue Nation? Well, how it really started was, I, you know, I want to talk a whole hole in your head, but just, uh, you know, I had been in the sports game for a very long time. Um, I coached, played, but, you know, I played, I coached, um, coached my sons, both of them. Uh, my older son, he's in his 20s. My youngest is in his, uh, almost about to be 18. So they've been playing sports oriented the whole time. So I've always been around sports. That's just been my thing. So, uh, just people have been talking to me saying like, yo, you need to do something with that. So um, I was just sitting at the crib one day and I was like, damn, what the hell am I do with this sports thing? You know, I had uh, did some scouting and recruiting uh, in 2015 uh, with the sports management class uh, for football, trying to just, you know, trying to grind and figure this out. Uh, JK, who I'll tell you about, he was like my uh, co-host for a little bit. He was like, we worked together at T-Mobile. We was both, you know, doing our thing. And I just wanted to find figure out to do my thing. So I was sitting on the couch like, man, what the hell am I going to do? This media school uh, commercial came on and I was just like, yo, sports, you want a job? You want to get something in media? You want to do something like this? Then get out to Ohio media school. And I'm just like, what the hell? How does that happen? Well, like, right when I'm sitting there thinking about it, yeah. so I'm like what I'm going to do. Then the commercial comes right on. Like it, it came right on. Like right when I was done talking, the commercial came right on. Wow. So number one, I know there's a guy. I don't care what anybody tells me. That's what I believe. I think there's a guy. I know there's a guy anyway. So that happened. And I'm just like, okay, I need to get down there. So, it's crazy because how I met G, he wasn't even, he was trying to go before that. So he got kind of lodged up. I came in, uh, went to the kind of, they have a day where you can just go kind of tour. Mm-hmm. So I toured the, uh, I came in, the first day I came in, I met this guy named J-Bat, but his name is uh, Justin Baptiste. So mm-hmm. he was the sports director and I instantly liked his voice and i just he knew what he was talking about so he was just like oh yeah you make sure you get in here i think me and you gonna we gonna vibe so i was like okay cool i went in there got behind the mic like this they gave me a little thing to read between the carolina panthers and the green bay packers like the game mm-hmm. read oh welcome to panther stadium that type stuff so i did it a few times 
Um, the girl, I don't know if she was geeking me up or hyping me up. You know how they try to do that to get your butt to come to school. You oh, feel yeah. me? How they be trying to trick you up. Yeah. So I think you have was, a real future here. Pay, yeah, pay you know what I'm saying? Today. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you sound great. You know what I mean? But yeah. for real, I was, she came in. She was like, hey, yeah, you need to be, go ahead and do this. I was like, man, y'all, that's what y'all all say. She's like, no, nah, straight up. I, I would tell you, like, if you was good, I told people. Was like, and I just... When I was just looking her in the face, she just seemed like the type that she wouldn't try to just fake it with me. Yeah, no BS. So she, yeah, she just looked like she was straight up. And then this other dude was like, "Hey, yeah, come in here. I'm gonna cast. I didn't even know what the hell a podcast was. I didn't know shit. Hmm. What the hell to do about nothing? Because I ain't never been no computer dude. You feel me? Like I, I know about them, but I just guess I just ain't never really got into them, even though I really can. Yeah, I just never really had the outlet." Anyway, long story short, we get, I get up in there and I, I'm like digging it. I do a podcast. I feel good. Um, I come in there the first day and we got a class of like 25. My first goal was to do high school. I did a high school show called the Central House uh, Sports Showcase. Um, and that's still going. Uh, another person of mine, he, he uh, was like a co-host me. Um, and that was just bef- that was before that even happened. But that was the goal. Do uh, type stuff. High school football, high school games, high school basketball. That's what I was really on. I was on my Cowboys and getting eventually doing a Cowboys show, but hmm. I was really on the high school thing. Okay. Very cool. G was up in there the same. Yeah. G was, and I love high school because, you know, I just, I, I, I've always been around kids, you know, especially I coach since I coach, like I said, I coached about 15 years. And about, about eight of them I did like close to freshman year, freshman ball. So I always love to see the young kids going into high school and see what they could be like after four years because that's yeah. how they start. You know what I mean? Little league's how it starts. Hmm. G comes up to me and he's like, um, and I was repping Cowboys. I always do, repping hard. So he came up to me. He was like, hey, you like the Cowboys? I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, you see that? He was like, yeah, I'm a Cowboys fan too. And I was like, oh, for real? So, you know. I heard plenty of people saying they Cowboys fans and all that bull, but I, I didn't test you. I'm going to see where your Cowboys knowledge is at. And, and, you know, if you don't know it, I've been Cowboys in 40 years strong, like 46. I'm 46, so 40 years strong, like in the womb, coming out the womb, Cowboys, <laughs> nothing else. That's all it's been. You feel me? Ain't nothing yeah. else. But no other team I liked, and then I liked the Cowboys later. It's been from the birth until now, and that's where it's always going to be. I'm never not going to like them. Okay, so so was it so, uh, go ahead. was it G's idea or your idea to start on that? It sounds like G initially approached you first, but like whose yeah, idea was it, it to was, start the show? It was kind of like we both once we met each other and started working together because we did the class for eight months, mm-hmm. so we worked together on all kind of projects. We actually started a show called the Black and White Sports Report first. We were actually doing that show before we even started Silver and Blue, but we would always have a half hour dedicated to. So we would talk about all kinds of sports. We talk about basketball, football, hockey, baseball. We talked about every sport and just what was going on during that day hmm. and during that week. Uh, when we were doing it, the finals was going on, and it was when Cleveland came back and beat Golden State. That's when we started it. That was the, that that was that period of time. Okay. So we were talking everything. And we just always dedicated at the end. And then it just kind of once we graduated out of school, we had been talking in the car like, yo, we need to do a cowboy show. Like we need to no, we was both on it. Like, yeah, but we need to be independent. We don't we don't want to be, you know, we want to pick us up syndicators. You know, that's the way we want to go. So we're just going to have that idea and eventually try to make it happen. And it was kind of like one of the things where you're dreaming, you're sitting in the whip, both of y'all sitting in the whip thinking like, yeah, we're trying to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Once, you know, we both graduated. I didn't do nothing for like two, three months with G. Hmm. Because he kind of, you know, started doing his own thing when he graduated. I was doing my own thing. I was still doing the high school show. So I was really kind of banging that out, getting a lot of good interviews with high school athletes, a lot of good you know, name type athletes. I was really, you know, I like to interview. That's my thing. Yeah. So G came back, came back at me at the first of the year, 2017. It was like, Hey, you ready to do this silver and blue thing, silver and blue nation thing. I figured out the name. 
Um, I, I checked it. I Googled it. I checked everywhere. There's nobody took Silver and Blue because when he first told me about Silver and Blue Nation, I was like, somebody would have that name. Yeah, it seems like it would. You I, know what I'm saying? My, you, you, you feel me? Silver yeah. and Blue Nation. Yeah, I mean that. I mean it fit. It fits perfectly, obviously. And you're right. That seems right. like something someone would have surely had. And I remember when I first heard about your guys channel and everything my initial thought was like oh wow they must have been sitting on that name for years and right no, guess not <laughs> yeah he he was like yeah he googled it he was like no nah, no nah, i checked everywhere it's silver and blue nation ain't even took so we're gonna go ahead and go with that i was like all right cool like let's roll with it so he was like i'm gonna just let you know like this if we're gonna do this i'm you're gonna have to no no playing around no we're going hard because once i put my mind to something i'm gonna make sure we go all the way out i'm gonna get the website get you know get instagram i'm gonna get twitter i'm gonna get all that stuff popping get it started and then you know we're just gonna start rolling with it he's like at first i don't want you really saying nothing i just want you to share um share like story um stories like writings share them and don't really say nothing until we kind of figure out how we're doing yeah so but it, you know he was like i'm gonna just we're gonna do it how we was doing i'm gonna be producing you're gonna be the on-air talent and we're just gonna bang from there and then i was like okay now how um, <clears throat> jk like i said my boy jk he was working with me and he i, I like jk and so i kind of i'm mean, gonna just keep it real like I wanted to have not just a black dude, but a white dude, and you know what I mean, yeah. and have the producer. I want I didn't want to have just like all black or all white. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have both views, so you could see and understand. Like, okay, um, you you can see it from a black person's view, you can see it from a white person's view, or uh, other people's views. But I just didn't want it to be one type of view, sure. and that's why we had the black and white sports report. That's where the name came from, the black and white sports report, because it was black and white. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so. Interesting. So obviously since that first show that you guys did, the show has evolved considerably. I mean, that's no surprise at all. Anytime you do anything from the early days, you're just trying to kind of put it all together with, you know, chewing gum and paper clips. Essentially, it feels like at first, uh, how, how, how do you feel that that's kind of progressed for you in terms of your comfort and, you know, just the general setup and everything? Oh, I mean, from day one, um, I felt like I've always had something to say. Mm -hmm. um, I've always felt like that's what I guess I've always wanted to be able to do deep in my heart and didn't really just never know it. So once I got behind the mic, you know, and did our first show, um, you know, G would critique me and say, you know, make sure you're looking in the camera or, you know, make sure you're saying like this and don't try to mumble over your words, you know. So he would always be giving me tips you know because I get nervous but when i get behind the mic like i always do i don't care how confident i'm feeling in my heart like it's going to be a banging show i'm always like super nervous yeah yeah I'm, that, you know what i'm saying oh, 100%. um so um I'm always like my own stuff in my brain like when i'm like trying to talk so it i think um <clears throat> once i started doing a couple of shows people were kind of vibing off of, of mm -hmm. us i i didn't give a hell you know what i mean i was and then big game james kind of just really evolved when g was like hey you need to crew we're gonna create your own page and have it called big game james he's like because you're gonna be like a a, a a celebrity type figure not celebrity type but you know what i mean have your like own little spiel kinda. yeah yeah. yeah so he was like you can you know that can be your own thing kind of your own alter ego and i didn't want to do it like i didn't want to have no big game james page i didn't want to do that all at all mm -hmm. i just want to do silver and blue i didn't want to do all, all that extra stuff he's like nah you got to do it and he created it for real for real on his own like he just made it hmm. i created your page but he's like yeah i created your page so now you can just start posting on it so that's a whole because when I was doing going hard, we would start, you know, doing videos and silver and blue. That's when, you know, 2017 is after Dak and them and Zeke had that great season in 2016. Yep. So blew up because we was really trying to post the quickest, fastest, most in-depth type stuff, not that everybody else try to have. Mm -hmm. Didn't try to be like everybody else. So when we was doing those videos, you know, the top 100 was coming out. Zeke and, and Dak and all those guys were top guys. So that's where a lot of people were feeling us because we was pushing out them videos a lot where a lot of people weren't doing at the time. And I don't give a hell what anybody damn says. 
Uh, no, I mean, there was a few videos I was going, we were going across the board, but nobody was really trying to push them videos out like that at that particular time. It just seemed like, so we just try to go hella hard with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, half the time it's just being right place, right time. But I mean, that, that's how we usually people will boil it down. I think there's also an added layer where it's got to be like the right guy or guys right place, right time. So it, it worked out well that you guys were able to kind of fill that niche a little bit for people and it really helps kind of grow the brand and everything because, yeah, you guys in two years, 57,000 plus, I mean, that's that's really impressive that you guys have been able to build that up, especially being one team focused and everything like that. Like it's it, it works greatly in your advantage, but you're also building and growing even in the off season, which is really tough to do. Yeah, and I think that was like, <clears throat> I mean, the comfortability, like mm -hmm. we were talking about, the last question asked me, I think that really just helped. Uh, you know, when we did the shows, uh, you know, and we really just kind of shout out the fans real hard and, and yeah. the other people because we just like them. I mean, we, we, we actually did, you know, go to school. This ain't something we just, oh, well, let's wake up one day and do this. We put in work to do this. Mm -hmm. We learned a lot of things. I learned a lot of things in school. I wouldn't have known, you know, how to create my own things and how to uh, use social media as a tool to really try to get things out. So it wasn't something that you we just did this on the fly. This was some really some hard work put behind. Oh, Not yeah. saying other people don't. I'm just saying that this was some real hard work behind this, like professional type work that we did, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, doing the commercials, doing our own videos, doing things like that. Yeah. How to try to continue to create. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, when we get the thing that I really like is that, you know, 57 K in two years, that's just straight grind. Like that's just straight, um, pushing stuff out like daily all day. Cause I'm, I'm gonna keep it real before we created big Dame James. Like I posted like all day, like she taught me, he was like, all right, I want you to start doing these videos and this is how you need to do it. This is how you can do it from your, you know, your phone. And this is how you can do these type of things. And I, once he like told me, I ran with that because he was posting more than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when we first started, I was just doing the show Sunday. We we're just doing the show every Sunday. He was pushing more of the content through the page. But once he kind of taught me how to do some things, which I already kind of knew, but once he kind of schooled me on it, mm. I ran with it. You know what I'm saying? I went hard because I wanted to have like the I'm addicted to that stuff. I want to have the best stuff. Like if we're going hard on this, I want us to have the best, the, the top stuff. If I want to see it, I want us to get, you know, I want to get the, the in-depth stuff. Like, I want to get the cowboy stuff that everybody ain't talking about. You feel me? Like, I don't want to talk about the commercial cowboys. I want to talk about these free agents. I want to talk about fringe players. I want to talk about measurement size. I want to get to the nitty gritty. I want to know I what say. the hell is really going on, what these guys are talking about. Yeah. Dare I say prospects. Would you say? <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying like yeah i want to and and i think that's the reason why it we've done so well because you know um and, and we look kind of professional i think that's has also helped because we start from the, the crib and went to the studio um but we only did one show a week on sundays and for us to get i feel like 57k in two years for only doing one show a week for an hour i think that's really good but we've been out there we try to get out there in them streets so-called like meet you when we got to the draft mm -hmm. we went to um the combine we went to training camp you know what i'm saying like yeah trying to uh just do this we're trying to get like the media passes all that stuff yeah i mean that that's that's the extra mile that most people don't either they don't follow through because they're hesitant to like they're too nervous they don't think that they're at that tier or they simply just don't know how to, even if they do have the ambition to try and go there. And that's, I mean, that's the next level thing of commitment that you guys are really good at doing. So, uh, yeah, something you mentioned earlier that kind of, you know, caught my eye or caught my ear, I guess, was when you were talking about kind of being nervous before a show. That's something that mm -hmm. I, I still struggle with. I've been doing this. Yeah. Prospect's been going about a year and a half. I think I started it. Yeah, I started it middle of August of 17. But mm -hmm. before that, before I was doing prospect, I was actually uh, basically running a site I had previously just been a contributor for called Project Shanks. And that was through that site and working with them that I kind of reached out to law after discovering him, uh, mm -hmm. not discovering him, but you know what I mean? Like yeah, learning yeah, yeah, of yeah. him. <clears throat> and then, uh, 
so it, it's been two years for me doing this and I still like, I, I, if I can get past the first few minutes of a stream, I'm usually straight. I'm good. Right. But it's just getting into it. Like the, there are times where even if I know I have plenty to talk about, my nerves will be so shot, like for the entire lead in that an hour before the show, I'll be like, oh man, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't know if I want to do this, but yeah, that's, that's why when I start the show, I hit the ground running like 50 miles an hour. Cause I'm mm-hmm. like, it's two things. One, just trying to throw it out there, like get right into the substance of the topic instead of giving myself time to get distracted or like overthink things. And two, mm-hmm. if I do get into the actual substance of the topic, then I'll settle in a little bit. So right. it, it's, it's always an adjustment. And that's something that you would think two years in that it's like, oh, that's not a problem. But uh, I'm incredibly introverted unless I know a person. So it's something where I don't, you, I'm not comfortable speaking uh, out in general. So when I'm doing a live stream and something and we have, you know, sometimes we've had, I mean, hell, we did that free agency one last year when the LeBron free agency decision came down and we mm-hmm. ended up with like, God, I don't even know. It was a couple thousand people live in mm-hmm. the thing at mm-hmm. once. And mm-hmm. like, you would think even then, like I, it was kind of anxious. <laughs> I was like the whole time, but whether it's two people in the thing watching or it's a couple thousand, that's still something that I, I struggle with for whatever reason. Even though it's a lot of the same people and uh, my my subscribers are really cool in the sense that they're not too critical or anything like that. And they, they support it. I don't really have any trolls or anything. So, mm-hmm. it, I mean, it's cool. I mean, building that community and everything within your channel is huge. And that's something that because of like you were talking about earlier, shouting out everyone, taking their questions and all of that. That's so huge because that's what kind of builds that bond. And I guarantee that's something that. Not that it's something you don't know, but that's definitely something that helped you guys stand out from so many other people that might have been trying to do what you were doing. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, we made it about a lot of people have these uh, Facebook pages and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Uh, But the biggest thing that we wanted to have and we're always going to continue to have is going to always be about the uh, the fans or the people that's in there. Because when we have these um, shows... Of course, we're going to talk about what, what we feel, but, you know, we want to listen to it because, number one, there's like tons of people that's in there that really have some great freaking football knowledge. Mm-hmm. So you can't sit there and say, oh, I know more. I know. Well, you may know a little more in one area, but someone else may know something else in another area. And they may something say something like in the chat that's going to really just be like, boom, I never thought of it like that or I never saw it like that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So it's always something that you can see and it makes it for a, a number one of just a better show because everybody is I love listening to everybody interject. I don't want to sit there and everybody sit there and listen to what Big Game James is saying or producer G is saying. Listen to what we're saying, but I love when the interjection because you look down and you're seeing that good talk back and forth, that good feedback, the good vibing. I, I that's what makes a great show. When you're like, let's say you're talking about a subject like a Demarcus Lawrence. Mm-hmm. have a lot of different opinions what you what you know what you can say on that so, so you can have three different people saying three different things or three different questions and each one of those it makes everybody else talk because it's like hmm yeah i didn't see it like that as well so yeah i think that's just the biggest thing giving everybody their shout outs because they're the ones that that keep you going yeah they're the ones that's going to be 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 making it making it huge and i feel like i'm just like everybody else so i'm never going to stand up and be like oh i'm better than y'all because i'm just like everybody else i just got this grind that somebody else may not be doing and i'm going to really make it and see it through hey really giving the shout outs to everybody in the show that it's not fake it's not it's not the phony crap it's not no phony shit it's nothing like that that's that shit is all real what we're talking about especially when we're giving shout outs to everybody out there yeah, definitely, definitely. So you you talked earlier a little bit about JK coming on uh, with you guys when you launched. Uh, I, I know that in the last year and change, I want to say, uh, really since, I guess, around the time that you and I actually met, uh, that JK left the show. Is there any particular reason on that, or was it just uh, moving on to a different project? Um, I think it was it was a, a few things. It was well, in, in my heart, it was J.K. had a, a other things going on besides us. I mean, he, he was just having his little he had a little his little boy. Okay. Um, 
And when you have kids, man, that changes up everything, especially the little ones. And there's little boys like two, one or two. Mm-hmm. And that's just a, a, a heavy type burn. Some other things have been going on in his life, just like everybody else. And, you know, he also uh, really liked to golf and never watched him. But he just looked like a golfer if you look at him. You know what I'm saying? So he looked so um, that was more of really going hard in this. Are you really going hard with it, too? And it was like, I don't. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that's what it was more than anything else. Um, that's where the split really came. Never it wasn't no bad split or no no nothing like that. It wasn't no man, get out of here, dog. It was never nothing like that. It was, you know, we're really going hard with this and you know, I got some other stuff going on, so I don't know if I can give that full commitment. And we needed that and that wasn't all the way there. So it was just hey, we just gonna keep on grinding and we always gonna be boys. That's just what yeah. it was. Okay. Was there any adjustment period to being the only person on camera having to carry? I know G chimes in. He's off camera most of the time, but he'll chime in with the questions or additional comments on topics. But was there an adjustment period being the only man on camera at that point? Not at all. I mean, once I got after I had a year in, you know, once I had a first few shows, like I said, I was getting nervous, but I don't have that confidence because I feel like I know what I'm talking about. I'm studying. I'm always reading, looking, watching tape, any of all that stuff. So I just like, you know, I'm confident in what I'm saying. And, uh, you know, once I start to talk and I don't really think about it no more. So, you know, uh, once I understood and we kind of felt it was getting ready to happen anyway, uh, we just was like, okay, you just roll with the questions and I'll come with that. And we'll just try to get more guest appearances, mm-hmm. you know, more things of uh, focus on big game James and really create that brand a little bit harder. Um, and no, it was not, it was, it was not, okay, but it was cool. Like I was all in, like I was ready just to really, I was going to talk about during the show and really get the uh, people to really, on it and, and uh, really interject and kind of take it from there. Gotcha. Okay. So it was about, I'm trying to think, I, I actually, I'm thinking of when law kind of introduced us. I remember exactly. It was late December, 2016. It was in that week between Christmas and new year's because I was on a vacation with my wife and her family. We were in San Francisco and I'd been trying to find some new contributors, some new writers for the DallasProspect.com. And Law had been kind of mm-hmm. trying to help me out with that a little bit. He had kind of put me in touch with a couple people. But for whatever reasons, uh, it just didn't it didn't take. Uh, in some cases, they didn't want to be part of a startup and, you know, wanted immediate compensation on stuff. And I was like, uh, dude, I, I'm, I'm a startup. I haven't made anything from this. So uh, not mm-hmm. an option right now. And so mm-hmm. I remember after like three or four of those, I was kind of like, ah, I, I don't know. So he, he eventually told me about uh, you and Silver and Blue Nation and all that. And I was like, well, I'm on vacation. I'm not, I don't really have time to do a whole lot of looking into the thing right now, but I'll, I'll look at it after. And he said something uh, just kind of hey, like, no, nah, I, th- I think uh, I think this one will be different. He already writes on, uh, he already does some writing and all that. And I think you guys would get along great. So I shot you a text while I was on vacation and I remember there was just kind of an initial feeling out process. I think we were both a little understandably skeptical about it, uh, just cause with this kind of yeah, thing, yeah. this business, as you've said, it's something where it, it's tough to really trust someone. And even if you do, that's not a, a yeah. guarantee of anything long term. So yep. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it was just, I just remember that distinctly cause we're texting back and forth and, uh, you know, we're talking about you possibly writing for the website and all that and us doing some work together. And I, I just walked away from that thing. We both had kind of like the, uh, narrow eye, like, yeah, all right, whatever, dude. And I was just like, <laughs> I was like, there's no way this is going to go anywhere. And then, uh, when I got back, we, we started yeah. talking more and it, it took off and I was like, oh shit, law was, law was dead on with that. That was a good recommendation for sure. Yeah. Cause I was, uh, you know, when he first told me, I, I, he was telling me, you know, I want this guy, I want you to meet, I, you know, um, was just telling me about your ideas and thought and process. I was like, okay, sound cool. But, of, uh, well, <clears throat> I'm, I don't want nobody to be thinking I'm trying to leave silver and blue, you know what I mean? And I don't want, you know, this to 
this to be feeling like I'm doing those being sneaky on the side because that's what I was. That's what I was in my own head. Okay, kind of like, well, you know, what's what's really going on? You know, with with this dude, I don't know him. You know, what's the agenda? Because like you said, I just feel like this this business have to be in it, and I ain't even been all the way in it yet. Is this grimy as hell? Yeah, it was grimy as hell. So. I'm already thinking like, what's the angle? What's what what what's what's behind the scenes? What what do you really want? You know what I mean? Friendship. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was like, what's what, what's really going on here? So, but then it was kind of like after we talked and we had the uh, good text back and forth. I was like, all right, yeah, he seemed cool. He seemed cool. And then I was like, you know, uh, when we got out there and got to meet you, and it was kind of like. You know, it that wasn't even going to be a that wasn't even a planned thing and mm-hmm. end up being a good thing. I was just like, OK, that's that's what's up. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? This is the way yeah. it's supposed to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember I had to kind of uh, convince you or kind of earn your trust initially. And then when we started talking with or I started talking with G, then I had to kind of do the same process with him and mm-hmm. kind of get him on board with everything. So I remember we all did. Uh, a couple conference calls talking about the ideas, talking specifically about what we wanted to do, what the kind of plan was and uh, how I was wanting to kind of use the website to kind of cross post everyone's content and have just this central hub for all things Dallas sports. And, you know, I, I have pop culture stuff on there as well, but mostly Dallas sports and especially with the Cowboys nailed down. And I mean, that part of the whole vision, it still has daily content. It's still, you know, brings in sources from everyone's content, but that's still one of those things that running everything on my own is a, a little tough to manage and have that exactly where I want it. But, you know, when you got the channels and everything growing and that's, that's really, I think the direction things are going, people aren't so much going to a website, even if it's got a central, you know, even if it's the central hub for all these different content creators, they're just subscribing to the content creators themselves and well, I'm already on YouTube. Oh, look, here's the new Law Nation or here's the new Silver and Blue, you know? So mm-hmm. it, it kind of works that way. So in that regard, it's an uphill battle, but I'm, I'm still, one thing I'm still proud of with the website, the thedallasprospect.com is uh, the, the written content we do because that's stuff that doesn't cross post anywhere else. Uh, articles that you write, I write. Uh, we've had a handful of other people come through and do some great work there as well. I, I think that's something that, there's a lot of quality there on that. And I, I definitely think that your work can get picked up as well by whether it's Dallas sports fanatic or another site like that and could get your stuff picking up on bleacher report or something for sure. I, I think you've got a unique voice that comes through really well in your writing. Hey, well, I definitely appreciate all that good love, man. But you know what I was thinking about right quick? Hmm. Um, uh, those dang nutri bar things, nutrition bars, whatever. Mm-hmm. I'm eating a uh, uh, chocolate. It, it got all different kind: oatmeal raisin, chocolate chips, s'mores. Yeah, you know them. Like a oh, man, them jokers. Man, I'm smashing. And then also, I had this cookies and cream drumstick the other day. Yeah, man, I effed that shit up. <laughs> like I, like dog, dog dog i killed it like and i'm mad because of the kids there's too many there's kids so yeah i can't just eat all of them and it's four in a pack so you had to get eight so i only really got one because everybody's had to get one too not Mm. they had eight but you feel me yeah so like i get that i'm gonna get it on my own and nobody better touch that shit (laughs) because if you do i'm gonna f you up all right I'll, i'll keep that in mind even with even with the good vibes and everything, I've been put on notice. <laughs> yeah, man, because don't do that. Like, if I bought some stuff like that, bro, <laughs> that I'm going to be really pissed. Like, I, I make that a point. Like, if there's certain, like, snacks or something I get, mm-hmm. I let, I put everybody on notice. Like, don't. You can eat anything up in here. Yeah. If you touch these dog, I'm going to F you up. <laughs> fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> so... Uh, you mentioned earlier when uh, we all when we were first formally introduced as far as a live event you in or you came down from Ohio and we did a happy hour event at Mexico in Plano Texas by the way that location is no longer open they're actually opening a new one now in Louisville and I think another location so 
Uh, what, they close it or something? Yeah, yeah. They sold that building, and now they're going to open up elsewhere. Oh. Um, but they have the one in Allen still, which is still, like, right there. But anyway, uh, I that just popped into my head. That's literally a development, like, in this last week or whatever. But Damn. worth worth noting, because that's where we had done all of our previous live remotes. I've now done one in the Allen location since the closing of the Plano. But we did a happy hour event out there, just a random... It wasn't any spe- specific situation or anything. We just all got together and did a event out there. Uh, we brought in computer from, uh, you know, he's he's buddies with Three Six Mafia and all that. A lot of connections there with the guys he runs with and all that. So we had him kind of as a guest host. You, me, Law, and uh, computer, and uh, we just had an interesting, <laughs> an interesting first show and everything. Uh, it was interesting getting to kind of talk with everyone. That was the first time I had done something like that. I think you and G had maybe done some kind of remote before, but that mm-hmm. was a trip for me because it took my kind of anxiety about the whole like live stream where I'm just looking at a camera or something and the person's not there. Suddenly you're looking out and there's a dozen or two dozen people or whatever. And it's just like, Oh God. And then I was having to set up all the equipment. And uh, I remember G sent you with like the soundboard because we had to borrow a soundboard for the show, which I hadn't even used one before. So I'm like frantically, like up until the final two minutes before going live, I'm frantically Mm -hmm. running around uh, doing all the the setup, testing mics, doing everything. And finally it just was like, all right. And now, and it was like, before I knew it, it was like, we were going live and it was just like, oh crap, I didn't even have time to get nervous about this part. (laughs) So it just kind of hit the ground running. Exactly. I mean, it was it was a rough show in some senses. I don't think we were as structured as we wanted to be. But at the same time, uh, I do have some fond memories of that just because, A, it was our first live remote. Uh, B, chance to to meet you. And, and that was – I met – I had just like a week earlier officially met Law in person. But a chance to meet you guys, work with computer, and there was just a lot of interesting back and forth uh, banter and that and everything that I thought it – I thought it was it made for an interesting, entertaining night for the people that came out for sure. Uh, and it wasn't too long before we started doing those a little more often. We did the draft after that, and was there a third one we did there? Uh, I did. We did those two, and that was it because we did that and we did the draft. Gotcha. With that, I had a good time at the draft because of the picks that happened. And you know what? I had a couple of people come at me like. Remember when we drafted Connor Williams and I was like, man, come on. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know I know about the size, putting him at the guard. Yeah. I didn't, you know, because I knew that's where they were going to move him. Yep. LVE, I didn't want him in the first round. Yep. Ooh, I'm, I'm still hearing. Round. Yeah, I'm still hearing about LVE and my uh, reaction of not on board. <laughs> I, I own it. I was wrong on that yeah, one. Yeah, I was worried yeah. about the neck and thus far that is the same that to me. But yeah. Yeah about the neck you know what i mean because mm-hmm. he still has it and anything can happen it's a, you're playing a linebacker position so anything can happen yeah so yeah i'm always worried about if you're playing a linebacker position because you can say that about your boy over at carolina mm-hmm. For Dude, sure. his neck he's done got a, he's got a couple concussions and a neck issue and he's plays all out so yeah every play you got to worry about that oh yeah absolutely but Hopefully it never happens, but if it ever were to happen, it's not like those people are going to be like, yeah, DDP, you were right about that one. Like, Right, right. It, it was smooth. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. They're definitely not going to give you the love they, on that. They always keep their receipts when you're wrong, but they lose theirs uh, whenever mm-hmm. whenever you were right about something. So it, that's just the nature I, of the I make beast. sure and let people know I'm right. I yeah. don't give a hell. I make sure and let people know. You know what I'm saying? When I jump on my page and I said something right, I'm going to let everybody know I said it. You ain't got to like it if I said it, but you know what? I said it out, out here first. Mm-hmm. And if I feel like I'm one of the first persons that said it, I'm going to say it to you. And that's just the way it's going to be. If I And if I didn't say it, somebody else said it, I'm going to give them hella love. But if I said that shit, I'm yeah. saying it. Oh, yeah. And by no means do I back down from an opinion. I'll hold an unpopular opinion even when I get uh, roasted for it for months. I mean, uh, obviously, thankfully, it hasn't come out to fruition yet, but even just some of the Zeke contract stuff, I was calling that yeah. calling that shit out a year in advance. And yeah. uh, I, I was having debates with all kinds of people on the show. I, I had a mini back and forth with you. I think I debated maybe computer and I can't remember if it was Ari or someone else, but just all kinds of having to defend it, having to defend it. And then 
uh, for a while earlier this off season, it was like almost coming to fruition. It's one of those things where you're like, I don't want to be right, but maybe it is. Right. <laughs> so yeah, there, there are definitely times there you feel like uh, Romo Shadamas or whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, well, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna see with all that coming up. That's gonna be a whole different thing. Like yeah. I told, like I said, this is about probably about two or three weeks ago. If you've been thinking about that DeMarcus Lawrence stuff has been going crazy, wait till Zeke and them contract come yep. up. Wait yep. till that happens. For sure, for sure. So um, so after the draft and everything like that, uh, the next time that you were back in town, I know in the middle uh, before then we, we worked started working a little bit more with some of the other people around here, kind of networking a little bit, worked a little bit with Ari Timken and Phantom, uh, worked with them for a little bit on that. And that was, that was kind of cool too. Ari obviously is doing his, you know, his stuff with the fan and he's doing really well, happy for him. Um, mm-hmm. so that, that's cool. It's always cool when you can be like, uh, someone at my job the other day mentioned, uh, they were listening to the fan and they specifically by name mentioned Ari. They're like, Oh, he's always on point. I'm like, man, I've beaten Ari in a debate on my own show. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> But yeah, no, it, it's it's definitely uh kind of cool. It gives a uh, a little bit of a, I mean for for I mean he's on, he's on if he's on if he's on the fan. I mean mo, I don't care. Like yeah. this is no this is no hate on Ari at all or anybody else. But I mean if you're on a, a the fan or a legit show, you're going to get a little more love than somebody who's just out here, yeah. you know, grinding like what let's say what we are doing in a in a sense. They're gonna like he may say it and he's not really saying it like anybody else or you're like, Oh, come on, man. Yeah. But he, the fact that he's on the fan, it's going to give him more credence. Cause they're like, well, he's employed by them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> um, what, what was your, your feeling? Um, if you recall, like the first time you went to, whether it was an event that you guys were doing or just something like that, where somebody like recognized you and wanted to come up for like a picture or just to meet you, um, what, like, what was that like for you? Uh, humbling, uh, kind of crazy because I think it's weird personally. I think it's really weird because I don't care about none of that stuff. Like, um, now when I'm at the crib now with me and my, my, me and my girl now, yeah, I'm a whole different animal. I'll, I'll be like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm the man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm, I'm humble out there for real. So, when people were coming up like, yo, you big game Jays, let me take a picture with you. Like that mm-hmm. really like that bugged me out because I'm like, yo, I'm not, no, I'm not, I don't want I don't want that, but it's cool, it's happening. You feel yeah. me? Like I don't want that. Like, oh yeah, look at me. I'm freaking big game James. You know right. what I'm saying? No, that's I'm cool. I'm like humbled that you even doing that for me because I feel like I'm just like a regular dude. I ain't nobody like that. Although do I do I do have a voice. So Right. Um, taken by surprise, to say the least. Uh, uh, humbled for sure, and it's dope actually. So I yeah. love it. It's dope. Like that happens. Yeah, for sure. I've had uh, the only time I've had encounters like that has been when we were at the Cowboys Experience. I've had probably half a dozen people come up to me, and um, yeah, same same thing. Like especially me being introverted, like. I didn't even know how to respond initially when someone's like, Mm -hmm. Oh, DDP. I was like, huh? What? You know, like it's weird hearing someone actually say that to you in person and you're like, what? Oh yeah. Like, Oh, you've heard of me. (laughs) Like, Oh yeah. There was a, I can't remember his name, but this guy, um, at the, I think it was the last Cowboys, um, experience event thing we did at lava cantina there in the colony. Uh, he came up to me and he was like, "Oh yeah, mm-hmm. my son and you, uh, my son and I watch your your stuff every week and all that." Like, oh, he wasn't able to make it today. He's gonna be so jealous. Can I get a picture? And I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> I was like, "Right, right." I was like looking around, like, right, seriously? This, yeah, this I'm guy, like, this guy messing with seriously? me." Yeah. So I, yeah. I I took the picture with him and he's like, he's like, "Oh, he's gonna be so jealous." Like talking about his son. I was like, "This is, this is surreal." Like that's the only right. like kind of over the top experience I had. It was cool, like you said, it was humbling. Um, and you know, looking back at it, I'm like, that was, that was pretty stinking cool. But same time, it's just like when it's initially happening, it's like you're caught off guard and you're just like, Oh God, <laughs> like DDP, what I do. 
<laughs> so, right. Yeah. Because I'm still like that with so many other people. I, I, mean, I mean, I'm not like, oh, but, you know, when I'm trying to get an interview mm -hmm. or something like that and they hit me back, I'm just like, whoa, you know, that's dope. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like that with a whole bunch of other people. Like, if that's people like that with me, well, I'm like that with a whole bunch of other people still, too. Yeah. No, Will it's be. it's awesome, uh, the, the people you've been able to bring on the show. Uh, so you've had Taco, Charlton, Jordan Lewis, uh, Bobby Bell, right? Um, yeah. Who's, who was another one you were just telling me about the other uh, day? Drummond? Uh, uh, no, uh, Patrick Walker. I've been well, in, in yeah, who's right. talking. Yeah. Patrick Walker, been talking to him. Um, and, you know, that was, I was geeked when he, he said he, you know, he, he would make something happen uh, later on down the line with me. And I was, I was stoked on that. Um, we cool. got, we had uh, Tom Downey from Dallas sports chat um you know we had lincoln coleman we had uh fast clark uh cole beasley's um manager also have brandon tucker he's with uh, uh trench warfare and they trained demarcus lawrence taco david irving malik collins nice uh, and he's 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 trained uh montez sweat sweat he's got a lot of guys actually i just talked to him like about a week ago and i wanted to come back on he said he would but some of these top athletes that have been in training in the combine and as such have been trained by him. Nice. Astronomical numbers. Yeah, no, that's... Ben, I mean, my thing... So my thing is I'm just trying to get... The biggest thing with me with the interviews, we we, did, we had, what, Jet M from the Cowboys? Uh, mm -hmm. Greg Ellis, who I tried to get on forever. Greg Ellis was on there. Yep. No, so that, like, you that's know, we, really I, I, cool that you're able to do that. That's something that – that's one of those things that I think also kind of helps separate you from a lot of these other brands that do this kind of stuff is you're able to get not just access with some of the players. You're actually able to talk to the other media people. And a lot of times, especially for like what we do, there's always that fear that uh, people who are in like the Dallas media are going to kind of thumb their nose at you a little bit, like not yeah. me that interested. Like, oh, pff, yeah, you consider yourself media too, I bet, huh? But no, it, it's awesome that you're able to get uh, so many people on the show and all that, whether it's former players, current players, or Dallas media, because that's something that few other people can can replicate, and that's that's a testament to the brand that you guys have built, U and G. Yeah, I just I, I really appreciate that. I really take I think I take pride. That's my biggest one. I take pride in because I told myself when I came into this business, um, the biggest thing that I was going to love to do, not just to be on the air radio things of that nature but i one of my forte to be interviews i feel like mm -hmm. that's really my forte is interviewing people i love to do it i love asking um people and then having the people listen and yeah. then you know ask you know ask them the good questions and get the you know information out uh that maybe he they won't tell somebody else you know and i feel like they get comfortable with me so i feel like that's one of the biggest things i take pride in you know so I want to get as many of them, them, them who's who's type interviews. That's going to be close. If I'm doing cowboy stuff, I want them close to that Cowboys news. I, my yeah. thing is, you can hear my voice. Hear somebody who's right there. Yep. No, I. I agree and so 100%. you hear my opinion, but now I got somebody here that's real close to it. So this is what it's probably. You know what I mean, so. Let, that's not we can have our thoughts just like with the draft. Mm -hmm. Say all this stuff about the draft and who you, who's the Dallas going to draft, who's this, who's that. But you know, it's everybody just has a, a really a, opinion on it. But I want to talk about people who the Cowboys are going to draft. Uh, some guy from, from some southeast Missouri state, and he, yeah, he looks like a good prospect. And I know Dallas ain't even going to touch him. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So I'm not gonna, you know, after you throw out a bunch of players, then you start narrowing down to who Dallas you think Dallas will really draft, who they're bringing in for these thirty visits, who they're working out, mm -hmm. and then and stop talking about these players that ain't Dallas ain't even looking at. You get what I'm saying? Yep, yep, for sure. Try to want to always bring the reality, not the fake. Yeah, the first four rounds for them almost always come off of those those thirty visits. I think the last time he took I mean, someone in the first four rounds that wasn't was Mo Claiborne. <clears throat> but uh, Demarcus Lawrence, too, I mean Demarcus Ware too, I believe. Well, I said I mean, Claiborne's I mean, more Mo. recent than Ware. 
I was saying the last time. For sure. That, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> that, I, I pivoted for a yeah, split second right. into cowboy talk on reflex. <laughs> but Right, right. Yeah. So uh, so you mentioned a month or so back that you are actually looking to move back down here to the Dallas area uh, ahead of next season. Is that still the plan or... Yeah, that's definitely the plan um, okay. because that's where all the business is at. That's where all the yeah. what my the, all my connects I feel like are there. Get more involved uh, everybody, with like Cowboys experience yeah, and Barry the Godfather yeah, and yes, all that. Yes, yes, Just be able to reach out and actually touch somebody instead of always having to text or talk. Yep. And feel like oh well it'll be uh, it'll be another month before I can get down there. It needs to be where I can talk because the ideas are already flowing. The things are already building, you know, me getting the system back in the crib and being mm-hmm. able to do the shows here at the crib now because um, you will be in Cali. It just it'll make it a little easier. Number one, I just feel like everything is happening the way I, I kind of want it to uh, because I wanted to do more producing on my own. I have been telling G that. And then he happens to go to California. He's like, oh, yo, I need to do, have you do this. I start getting it out. Boom. So. I feel like that I wanted to be even stronger by the time I came back home to Texas would be nice. Yeah, the, definitely the the voice and all that. But you know what I mean? The brand, everything will be the way you want it because you can feel like, yo, I'm home. Yeah. So there's no concern then uh, with G being in California and all that, that the brand's going to be changed up or anything like no. that, right? Not not at all. It's I'm gonna keep it real. It's gonna be just like you see these rap groups or these um singing groups that uh they start out at four and mm-hmm. then you know they're good and then they go do their thing, but they still keep that central brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. We still are gonna always have that silver and blue and we're gonna still bang that, even though he's gonna be in Cali. That's why we got me on the ones and two, so we can still have that good product coming out even while he's there. Me and him can, you know, have that good top, uh, chopping up, and, you know, he can really c- focus on getting even more production out for Silver and Blue Nation. And also, I can grind on Big Game James because I'm doing stuff on my own. So, yeah. And he and he might be doing some stuff on his own as far as producing on the side what he wants to do. I think that's the best thing to do because you're keeping busy, but you always still have that central brand because we went we gone too hard. We likes follows brand fans whatever. Mm-hmm. We went too hard for to just be like oh that's just disbanding hell no. Yeah yeah I, I get that. Um, yeah, and in, in addition to that too, it, it makes sense as well uh, with kind of the you've mentioned before. I think you've called it Voltron <laughs> that we've uh, kind of formed up a little bit. Uh, with just collaborations with other brands and all that, and uh, whether it's Dallas Prospect and Silver and Blue working together, uh, we've worked with Law Nation and like Vodge in the past. We've worked with them, um, and I, I think another one and all that that I've been doing more work with lately and that I'm excited about doing stuff with as well, uh, the Sports Fury as well. I mean that that's kind of the thing is you kind of it's like we're building like our own almost network of sorts regarding it and it's something where it's like if we're all in it together but without being tied up in each other's business I think that's something that can help us go a long way like even when we were unofficially doing that whether it was us and law uh, we were always able to kind of help each other out whether it was with a tip for a stream or a setup or a guest or you know some kind of thing like that Uh, law introducing you and I and you know, just things of that nature. I think that's something that uh, continuing to do that will help us grow as well. Because when we all grow together, then it furthers how how far I feel like we can reach overall. Right. I mean, that's the best way to do it. You got to have everybody. You, you know, you don't have to need to have the hate or anything like that. It's just about everybody has their own brand, and you know but you can still grow together. You can still have do things together, but still have your own kind of thing. And Mm -hmm. I think that's what everybody will want to have. I mean, I wouldn't want to just be all up on just one type of thing. Everybody want to have their own type of, uh, you know, ideas and theories uh, and things they want to do. So, but as long as you can still connect and still have that networking with each other, that's the best thing to do because you never know, you know, it's, uh, you know, we've already talked, always talked about, it's not always, uh, how much you know is who you know. Right. So, and that's, and that's the damn truth when you see it in this damn business. 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so what, uh, what do you kind of foresee like in the future for silver and blue, like regarding, is there like a particular goal or milestone that you kind of have in sight, or is it just the standard grind of just keep trying to grow and build this thing up as big as you can? Um, <clears throat> continue to build it and grow it because things you want to do. I mean, we, we're getting this uh, merchandise together. Mm-hmm. You know how you have the t-shirts and things of that nature. Excuse me. Do that. that we're still trying. And now that we're going to be far, far away from each other. Yeah. Build that infrastructure to where let's solidify this while you're going and then see what happens. I mean, honestly, I want somebody who's rich <laughs> find us and say, "Hey, yeah, I just." And I'm sure everybody's like, "Yeah, everybody." You know, I think I would love for us to be syndicated where for the time because type, like I said, we're doing this and. I'm bringing in these damn interviews. Like, like you see the fan and them guys, mm-hmm. and they have those nice interviews with the top players, and yeah. that's one of the things that really you like to hear. You like to see. Mm-hmm. You like to see them interviewing the coaches and players and other media people. That's why you kind of listen to them. They have their own type of thing, but they get them other people, so it's not you're not just hearing them every single day. Yeah. Other no. people and other type of thoughts. And I think that's where I want to head. If it's just silver, if it's a silver and blue thing, where you get sent, we get syndicated like that. That is great, but that's my my thing. I kind of want to have a like silver and blue nation, big game James show, something like that. Yeah, but I, the, the who's who? I, I mean, I really want that. That's and it's not that I want to be a big star, but out there, I want to get them top dogs because I know I can. Yeah, no, I, absolutely, and you've you've definitely shown a proficiency at uh at getting some tough interviews and all that. So that's, that's great. Um, yeah, I mean, regarding prospect and all that, uh, the only, the only thing I would say for a milestone for me that I'm aiming for in this year, trying to make it happen this year, uh, is kind of the formation of the network. Like I've mentioned, uh, and all that, I want to put something together. Uh, I don't, I don't think I'm actually going to call it TPN that that's kind of, transitioned into a show title reference thing I do. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But all the same, uh, I do think that when you have other honest, creative people around you, uh, honest, loyal, creative people around you, you all just kind of vibe and feed off of each other. And that's, I mean, that's the best way to continue to grow. I think Uh, not just the grind and everything like that, but it keeps, it keeps everything creatively refreshed. And I think that that's something that, uh, just everyone benefits from. So yeah, uh, try and form something like that. We'll try and do it. Like you said, form a Voltron here and, uh, see where it can go. But it's just a, a matter of getting to that point. Yeah. I mean, like I said, two years is not a lot of time. Yeah. In this, it feels like it mean? when you're doing it, but yeah, in the grand scheme, right. two years is nothing. Because it's like, this has been a lot of people have been in this for a long time. So, you know, like I said, it's just about, you know, you doing something at the right time, somebody seeing it and saying, Hey, I'm feeling that. I, I really like that. I like what you bring to the table and let's let's kinda do this. Yeah. I feel like in my heart that's the way it's gonna go. So that's why we're gonna keep on the grind. I just feel like that's the way it's gonna go. And and I feel like what I wanted to do is if that can happen, I always wanted to bring a whole bunch of people and, and just say, Hey, we, we got on with this. And now I want to, you know, open the door for you. And I want to be able to do this for you because I always wanted people. I've always, I've always had that kind of dream to get on with something and just be like, yo, I got this. Hey, I've been trying to do this. Is it a really good idea? Oh, you know, check the idea. All right. Boom. Yep. Let's get you on and see if that can happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Well, is there anything uh, before we wrap up here that you want to plug? Tell them about the, the show, what, what time on Sundays you're on any social media stuff? Well, 
just make sure you just check out Silver and Blue Nation on Facebook. We're there every Sunday, usually around the 2 p.m. Eastern time, Eastern Central time, Eastern Standard time, excuse me. But that may be changing because, you know, like I said, producer is going to be in uh, California. Yeah, three-hour time difference at that point. Yes, yeah, so we'll see what happens with that because he's leaving to California the 9th. So uh, continue to check out. We're on be on YouTube. I'm going to be on doing more shows on Silver and Blue Nation and, and – and James Page because now I'm on the ones and twos at the crib. So now I can just do Big Game James as well. And Big Game James is not going to be all Cowboys. How you have it, uh, DDP, where I talk about sports. One day I might talk about something else. I might talk about sex. I might talk about, you know what I mean? I might talk about some of the economy, you know. Sure. Uh, it, it could be anything because it's going to be Big Game James. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's not going to be relegated to just Cowboys. That's what Silver and Blue is going to be for. So just keep on tuning in and uh, hopefully keep on supporting, man, so we can keep on grinding because this shit ain't free. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's uh, That's one of the other parts, too, uh, without opening that can of worms on a topic. That's something else, too, that people don't always realize is the not just investment as far as time, but there is a monetary investment of it. So uh, if it's something where you thought you like the show and want to support it, Patreon, you know, Silver and Blue, you guys have one. Prospect has one. Uh, everything, everything helps. Cause I guarantee tenfold of, uh, what comes in is invested back into the, into building the thing up. So if you dig it, that's something to, to do to support silver blue. So anyone you like really, whether it's our shows or others, uh, if they, if they're doing the kind of grind that we are and building something up, probably they need help, <laughs> but hey. yep. But uh, James, thank you for coming on, for being my first guest for this podcast, Feeling Dangerous with DDP. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. and uh, Appreciate you. I look forward to having you back on to talk Cowboys here in the near future. That's going down. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I've been DDP, and uh, apparently I've been feeling dangerous. Till next time. Salute.